Hey everybody, it's time for a smoke detector video, not an unboxing video, um, because this is one that I actually got off of Facebook Marketplace yesterday, not off of eBay. Um, very unusual to find vintage smoke detectors listed on Facebook Marketplace, um, not only on the site itself, but just local to me. That was quite a surprise. This was about like 10 minutes away from me, and I picked it up. So the people, I guess they were replacing it, and they just decided to sell it, and now I got it. So this here, you may have seen these before. I actually have seen these in person before, and I've uh, I've had I have videos of these on my channel. Um, you might remember a long time ago, I went to a house. It was an open house that had a fire alarm system in it. It was like a really old, like intermatic fire alarm system or something. They had a couple of bells as the signals and some pull stations. I remember there was like a chevron, I think, and a really old, like, one that you like hit with your hand or something. I don't really remember. But then they also had a bunch of these installed throughout the house, if you remember. But I didn't know if they were the ones that were branded by Early Guard or Square D, or if they were um, the ones that were branded by uh, Pyralarm or Guardian. This one, you probably just saw when I turned it over and you probably can already tell from the title, this one is a Square D company model, um, the Early Guard, uh, which was their model name, and it's model number EGD-1C. Now they did have models like this, if you can see right there, this would have originally been a line cord powered model, but uh, whoever originally had it cut the cord on it, and uh, EGD-1C, the C stands for cord, because they did have another model that was just the EGD-1, and instead of having a line cord like that, it had a, like regular pigtail wires coming out of the back of it for uh, hard wiring. So they had both models. Um, and then Pyralarm, the uh, company, or actually these are made by Cerberus Pyrotronics. Pyralarm was just kind of their like brand name for their residential detectors. And then Guardian was the model name of the detectors themselves. Um, but they had both versions as well. They had a line cord powered version and a, a hardwired model. And they also had different versions with like auxiliary, or not auxiliary, auxiliary but external transformers, which I'll get into in a minute. But um, you may remember that there's another version of this that's um, made by Pyralarm that it looks kind of like this version. This one here is the battery powered model, of course, the FB1, which I've made videos on before. But I've mentioned before they had a hardwired version of this one too which looked exactly like this, except it had an LED on the side right there. It had the same exact circuit board and everything, so I don't know why they had to make this version hardwired and this one. I, I don't really know why they decided to have both those designs. Now I think it could be, this is the sensor itself right here, this sort of can type thing. They did have system detectors that were just like this sensor part right here, so maybe they thought, oh, we have this sensor already made. We can just adapt that into a, an actual residential unit. So maybe it was cost cutting. I don't really know which one came first. Um, yeah, I, I have no idea actually, uh, because this one is not really dated anywhere. Um, and you can see it does. It doesn't even say Early Guard on it. It's a Square D company. Um, but Early Guard was the like the once again like the model name I guess you'd say of their detectors because. This one would actually be the predecessor to the Early Guard EGD-4S right here. This came out just a slight bit after this one, I'm pretty sure, which I actually mentioned in this one's video that I made. But um, you can see that on these, they almost always have the Early Guard logo in addition to the Square D Company logo. And I don't know if there was another label up here that got removed, but uh, I, I honestly can't even tell. But it does say Square D Company. It has the model number there still, and the UL listing. And this one's issue number 213, and this one's issue number 7039. So yeah, this one is clearly came before this one. Um, all right, now I'm actually going to take the detector apart now for you because um, you can get the cover off, but you have to remove those four screws on the back. So let me go ahead and do that really quickly because I really want to show you guys the inside. Okay, all four of the screws are out. I've unplugged it. The LED is no longer lit. So, lift the cover just straight up and off. 
and there it is, the inside. And you can see this model has an Edwards horn shield logo right there, just like the uh, old Honeywells and GEs and other ones. I don't know if any of those models, the FRU-2, had Edwards horns. I think they always had Kobishi. But, um, yeah, these always had Edwards horns, as far as I can tell. And that was because the cover is, like, flat, and the horn, like, rests up against the cover. And Edwards horns are the only ones that have the flat top there. So, um, you'll also notice the transformer right there on board. Now, I mentioned that some of them have external transformers, and on those, they don't have the transformer right in here, obviously. Instead, they have sort of like, a, it's almost like an AC adapter type thing, like the, um, like those transformers that you use for like, um, like the transformer for my Vista panel, like that. Um, so you basically attach the cord to the screw terminals on the back of the transformer and plug it in, like that. Um, actually, you know what it's very similar to? It's very similar to the smoke alarm center from the SA-77RF uh, by BRK or First Alert. Um, it's very similar to that design with the external transformer. But this one is one of the models that has the internal integrated transformer on the PCB itself. So there's no need for one of those external uh, cord transformers. Now... I mentioned that I did see the, I have seen these before in person. I've actually seen them two other places outside of that open house. Um, there's a friend of mine who has a Christmas party like every year that we go to. They're actually friends of ours from the pool. And they have one at the top of their hallway. At least they did the last time I went there a couple of years ago. It was still there. And um, there was another friend of ours that had one. They were actually friends that used to go to our church back a long time ago, and we used to go there for, like, like these parties, I guess you would call them. I went there a few times, actually, and they had one at the top of the hallway, at the top of the staircase as well, but theirs was very different. If I put the cover on, notice how the sensor, it doesn't stick very far out of the cover. Well, the one that they had, for some reason, the sensor stuck out like about a half an inch more out of the cover, and I have n I could not figure out why. I actually didn't even notice it until years later when I posted the picture I took, um, and I thought, okay, well, that's weird, and then I found another one in a, a house for sale, which I recently, uh, we, you saw it in one of my previous volumes of real estate browsing. I think it was like volume 10 or something like that, maybe volume 9, um, but it had the sensor, once again, it had the sensor sticking out really far. So I thought, okay, that's got to be either a different model or somebody messed with these. So when I got this one, I was feeling this sensor around. And I went, I did this. I twisted it. Which way? Maybe. There, I twisted it like that, and it went like that. And then... It came right off. So, yeah, this sensor, it's detachable, apparently, and I guess that's for cleaning. But here's the funny part. <laughs> you know these are made by Cerberus Pyrotronics, um, but this one's labeled Early Guard, or Square D. The actual sensor itself is still labeled Cerberus Pyrotronics. It's model F704, contains eight microcuries of radioactive material, americium-241, and, yeah, so I'm guessing this is just, like, the head, a head of, like, their system smoke detectors. So I guess this would, would be compatible with, like, a system unit, which is pretty cool. And I had no idea that this was even possible. So that's really cool. And you can see in there, you can sort of see in there, it's like a, I think this is a dual chamber sensor, the bottom reference chamber on the bottom here. But uh, it only goes on one way. There's like a keyway right there that fits into that groove. Um, get this sensor back on. So yeah, oh yeah, and I actually didn't want to put it back on yet because this solves the mystery of why the sensor looked like that in our friends and in the one that I saw at the open house. Because if you just take the sensor and put it in the cover, look what happens. It sticks out. 
too far. So I'm pretty sure that somebody just took the sensor off, didn't put it back on right, and just like put the unit back up and it fell like that. And that's why those ones look like that. And I didn't want that to be the case because I thought, oh, there might be some versions out there that have this weird sensor. But one of our friends um, in our community had this um, suspicion that they were taken apart or broken or something. And it turns out they might be right. So I'm going to take, or I'm going to actually put the detector back together now, and then I'm going to power it back up and we're going to give it a test. All right. She's put back together again, plugged in. The LED is lit, indicating there's power applied and the unit should be active. And now this one is very old, does not have a test button like a lot of older units that I own. So because of that, we're going to have to use the can smoke to test it. So hopefully it worked when I tested it before. So let's see if I can't get it to go off again. Hmm. One more. It takes a little while for it to sh shut up, but... Yeah, it has that classic uh, modulated DC squealer tone to it. Sounds just like a, a Honeywell TC49A, actually, or a GE. Very cool sound. Um, I'll give it one more test, I guess. Maybe. Yeah, a really cool sound. I really like the sound it makes. Like I said, it reminds me a lot of like our, my childhood Honeywell TC49A. Um, yeah, I love the modulated DC squealer tone. Um, yeah, uh, I don't have a manual, sadly, obviously, because this was a used detector that I got. Um, and also, I don't think this came with a mounting bracket, but when I got it, it had two screws inside of here, like in, in these holes here, that like went through the back through those two holes there. So I guess you're supposed to mount it like that. But I could have sworn I've seen ones that have a mounting bracket. Like a, it's like a round sort of trim ring almost, I think. I'm not, not, not entirely sure, but I guess for the line cord models, they just figure you can just drill it, screw it right into the drywall. So, that being said, I don't know if there's anything else left to say about this unit. Other than I'm very happy to finally have found one of these. Uh, maybe I'll someday find one of the uh, Pyralarm Cerberus Pyrotronics made ones. Uh, I also kind of want to find one of the ones with the external transformer. Those are pretty cool. I know Jan Eaton has one of those. And uh, I think Frank Wakeman also has one. Um, but yeah, that is about it for this video. So thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you in the next video.